Hi guys, welcome back to another video of Edgewood channel. So today's topic is veterinary medicine and the portion is common clinical poisoning. So poisoning is very common among animals. So we need to follow certain doctrines and principles whenever we are suspecting a poisoning case. So there are many methods to deal with the poisoning cases. So we will be discussing all those methods in this video. So if you haven't subscribed our channel yet, feel free to subscribe and hit the bell button for more updates. So moving to the introductory part. Oh, whenever the animal get access to certain potent poisons that leads to death. So poisons such as herbicides, insecticides, rodenticides and metals and the paints. They will be accounting for the majority of the poisoning cases which we are finding in the field. So in most cases either they will be causing the nervous excitation, nervous weakness or gastric irritation and bleeding, vomiting and diarrhea. So the common poisoning conditions in all species of animals that are accidental herbicide poisoning or pesticide poisoning or organophosphate or organochlorine compounds. Next is nitrate or nitrite toxicity. Next is ectoparasite cell toxicity that is amitraz is very common in case of whenever we are suspecting demodicosis and all we will be giving amitraz shampoos. So the animal will be accidentally leaking the amitraz and the poisoning will be happening. So cypermethrin and deltamethrin that is pigments. Drug toxicity such as penicillin and helminthic cybermectin toxicity. Heavy metals such as lead and mercury. Now herbivores are more susceptible to plant poisoning. There are many plants which having poison contents. Ruminants are highly susceptible to urea and non-proteinaceous nitrogen toxicosis. Other poisonous plants are lantana camara. Mimosa invisa and strychnine poisoning is very common in case of machines. So these are some important poisonings and toxins or toxic plants affecting the body system. So the main system will be dealing and will be telling the poison. So in case of gastrointestinal system, mainly arsenic, molybdenum, amitraz, propylene glycol, irritant oils, toxalbumin, urea toxicosis. Cardiovascular system mainly cardiac glycosides in many plants will be affecting the cardiovascular system. And moving to the respiratory system, manure gas poisoning that is hydrogen sulfide and ammonia and methane. Whenever we are making gas from the manure, there will be expulsion of many poisonous gases. So animals will be inhaling those gases and it will be attacking their respiratory ciliary mucosa and many respiratory problems will be faced by the animal. Next is the urinary system. So the main problem is ochratoxin and citrinine toxin. They will be attacking the glomerulonephro system and glomerulonephritis will be the main problem and the urine content will be having different color, different order and this can lead to even acute renal failure. Next is the musculoskeletal system that is mainly aluminium fluoride and toxicosis such as they will be attacking many enzymes of the muscular system. So the contraction will be blocked. The muscular proper muscular contraction will be blocked due to the attack of certain ions on the enzymes. Next is hepatic toxicosis that is the very famous aflatoxin. So whenever aflatoxic happening, hepatic fibrosis occurs and hepatic, this leads to hepatic toxicosis. Moving to the blood and lymphatic system, mainly copper poisoning and cyanide poisoning will be affecting the RBC, WBC and platelets and this will be inhibiting the erythropoiesis and the clot formation capacity. And there are many anticoagulants that is used in the rodenticides and all. So this is very common. Now moving to the nervous system, the main compounds are bromides and borons and mercury and lead and certain fungal toxins and plant toxins may attack the nervous system that will stop the brain perfusion. Oxygen will not be reaching the brain and there will be cerebral edema, cerebral coma and all. So many organochloride compounds are example. Now moving to the skin that is selenium toxicosis, iodine toxicosis and certain plants. So suspicion. 
So common symptoms exhibited by large animals at this time, that is whenever we are suspecting a poisoning is, sudden death will be there. Salivation, vomition, neurological signs, presence of moldy feet, presence of household waste and medicaments, sewage water contamination, presence of dead rat or rat waste, spray of insecticides and weedicides, use of paint, etc. So, moving to the treatment protocol, that is prevention of further exposure. First of all, we should prevent the further exposure. If at all some poisonous plant is in the near of the animal, we should take it away from the animal so that animal will not have exposure to that poison again. Next is supportive or symptomatic treatment. If at all the animal is having convulsions, first of all, we need to balance the convulsions or we need to eliminate the convulsions. So, we will be giving anti-convulsive drugs. Next is hypersalivation. So, we will be giving the drugs which will decrease the hypersalivation. And we will be giving fluids to prevent hypovolemic shock or septic shock. Third one is the specific antidote. Specific antidote are the pharmacological compounds which will act against the poison. Next is the prevention of further exposure. So, alkalis are more dangerous than acids. Acids uh, mainly form insoluble acid proteins. Hence, its effect is partially self-limiting because they will be forming the proteinates. Alkalis form alkali proteinates along with the soaps which will rapidly penetrate into tissues and tissue necrosis and tissue ischemia will occur. Inhaled poisons can be eliminated by providing assisted ventilation oxygen therapy. Topical applied toxicant can be removed by washing with plenty of water and soaps and all. Skin contact can be eliminated by washing with plenty of water and benzene or alcohol. So clipping of hair or wool may be necessary in case of topical problems. And in case of MSS, that is, we have got a value of MSS in case of dogs, cats and pigs. If we are finding the suspected within few hours of ingestion. The swallowing reflex is absent. Emily is convulsive, corrosive agent or volatile hydrocarbons or petroleum project is ingested. MSS is contraindicated, such as whenever an animal is having convulsive phase, we should not go for MSS. And whenever swallowing reflux is absent, we should not go for MSS. In these three cases, MSS should not be made. The main emetics used in case of dogs and all are, there are oral and parenteral. Oral is mainly syrup of ipecac and hydrogen peroxide. Parenteral, that is the apomorphine. Now moving to the gastric lavage. This is done mainly in the monogastric animals and 10 ml of lavage fluid per kilogram body weight should be given. So this is actually done with endotracheal tube and stomach tube. So this is gastric lavage. So gastric lavage in large animals, it is also of value that is insertion of stomach tube. So gastrotomy or ruminotomy may be necessary when lavage technique is insufficient in case of large animals. And when the toxicant cannot be physically removed, we should go for ruminotomy. Or you, we can use activated charcoal. And because the absorption potential of activated charcoal is very much high. Now, we can use for universal antidotes. That is, we can make it activated charcoal, like magnesium oxide and all. So, universal antidote, in case of cattle, we will be giving 240 gram 2 or 3 times per daily. Calves will be 2 spoons, sheep will be 1 spoon. So, moving to supportive treatment. We should control of seizures, maintenance of respiration. We should give proper ventilation such that more oxygen will be there. And we should give proper hydration such that the toxicant will be eliminated by through the urine. Drugs to counteract the symptoms accumulated by the ailing animal. Administration of gastric demulsions in simple stomach animals. Fluid therapy if dehydration exists. The complex vitamins for normal movement of the food and flora. And normal action of microbes. Intravenous elimination in case of inhabitants, blood transfusion if there is severe blood loss, Roman cut transplantation in large animals if needed. Now moving to the specific antidotal therapy. So there are specific antidotes for certain poisonings. So you can go for this. That is in case of atropine poisoning, it's physospecmin. Barbiturates, it's bemagrine. Morphine, it's nalorphine is used. Nexomica barbiturates. You can read this. So specific toxicities. So rodenticide toxicity is very common. We are using rat poison in the field a lot. So sometimes the animal may eat it. So what happens? Rodenticide poisoning will happen. So they will be worked by binding vitamin K. 
which inhibit the synthesis of prothrombin and the clotting will be blocked so that clotting factor is blocked so that clotting problems will happen so whole blood transfusion is also the way or we can inject vitamin k so acetaminophen poisoning so the common drug for analgesia whenever we are using it antidote is actually n acetylcysteine in left oxycosity we can see the basophilic stippling diagnosis is large nucleated rbcs that is basophilic stippling now remove lead from the gi tract first of all we should go for gastric lavage and we should give chelators and iv fluids for dehydration diacetyl and phenobarbital to prevent the annual c problem in case of pyrethrin and pyrethroids uh, bath the animal and use benzene or alcohol if at all it's going inside the mouth you can go for vomiting and charcoal cathartics atropine can also be applied so organophosphates and carbamates uh, inhibit cholinesterase activity they will be inhibiting the cholinesterase activity so atropine is the best method so thank you guys